In the last video we saw how to make curved lines with Photoshop Elements by making a round selection and then adding a stroke around that selection. In this video, which is part two, we're going to look at another way to make curved lines. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video, but it'll work with other versions too. For this technique, we're going to use some shapes that come with elements and look at a few easy ways that we can manipulate them to get a curved line. In this version of elements, it's really convenient to get to those shapes. Just go down to the bottom right of your window and click on this graphics icon. That displays the graphics panel. At the top of the panel, there's two drop-down menus. I'll leave the one on the left at By Type and change the other one to Shapes. That displays all these different shapes that come loaded in Elements. It's a little different in older versions of Photoshop Elements. I'll switch over to Photoshop Elements 8 to show you how to get to the shapes from there. First, go up to the Window menu and choose Content. And that'll make the Content Panel visible. You can click and drag it by its title bar to move it up to the top of the panel bin. You see that blue outline that goes around the effects panel? Well, we want to go a little bit beyond that until we just see a blue horizontal line at the top and then let go. And now the contents panel is at the top of our panels bin. And you can make it bigger by clicking and dragging on the bottom right of the content bin just to give it a little more room. Now you'll see those same drop-down menus at the top of the content panel. Make sure that the left one is set to By Type and the right one to Shapes. And now we see all the shapes available in Photoshop Elements 8. Okay, here we are back in Photoshop Elements 12. I'm going to create a new document by going up to the File menu and choose New Blank File. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command N on a Mac or Control N on a PC. The new file dialog box will appear. I'm going to go with uh, the default settings and just click OK. Now we have a blank white document in the live work area. Over in the shapes panel, there's lots of different shapes. You can scroll through them by clicking and dragging on this tab over on the right of the panel. and you can see how many of them there are. And you can also drag up by holding uh, down on the mouse button and, and dragging with that tab. For this tutorial, I'm going to look for shapes that have curved lines as part of the shape. Right near the top of the panel, there's quite a few arrows that have curved lines. I'm going to double click on this arrow here. When I do that, we see it appear in the live work area. Let's check it out. First, notice that it has this bounding box around it with eight squares, or what are commonly called handles. You can click and drag on those handles to change the size of the shape. The reason we see that bounding box is because I have the Move tool active in the toolbox. If I switch to another tool by clicking on it in the toolbox, for instance the Zoom tool, the bounding box will disappear. Let's switch back to the Move tool by clicking on it in the toolbox. And once again we see the bounding box. The reason we see it is because it's an option of the Move tool that is on by default. I find it distracting, so I always turn it off. It might not bother you, so it's totally up to you whether you keep it on or not. By the way, the bounding box is non-printing, so if you were to print this out, you would just see the arrow and not the box around it. I'm going to go down to the Tool Options and click where it says Show Bounding Box. And now it goes away. On some older versions of Photoshop Elements, you'll find it in the Options bar, which is located at the top of the window. So here in Photoshop Elements 8, if I select the Move tool, this is the Options panel up here, and you can see right here it says Show Bounding Box. You can click on it to turn it off there too. Now back in Photoshop Elements 12, notice how the arrow looks kind of rough or jagged around the edges? That's because these shapes are what's called vector images. I don't want to get into the difference of vector versus raster images in this lesson because it gets kind of technical and it would make this video too long for our purposes and off of the main objective which is to make a curved line. So I'm just going to say that we can change it into a regular image layer. I'll switch to the layers panel by clicking down here 
and you can see when we double clicked on the arrow in the shapes panel it added the arrow as a new shape layer. Notice how the thumbnail of the layer has a gray background. I'm going to go up to the layer menu and choose simplify layer. Now our shape layer no longer has those fuzzy edges and in the layers panel instead of a gray background our layer has a checkerboard background which means that the background of that layer is transparent. Now I'm going to delete the arrowhead so we just have our curved line. To do that go over to the toolbox and click on the rectangular marquee tool and that will make it active. Now over in the live work area I'm going to click and drag a rectangular marquee around the arrowhead and now just press the delete or backspace key on your keyboard to delete it. Deselect by pressing Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC. And we're left with a curved line. At this point we can edit the line. To do that go up to the image menu and choose Transform, Free Transform, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-T on a Mac or Control-T on a PC. Notice we get a bounding box around our shape. It's just like the bounding box that we disabled from the Move tool earlier, except now we decide when the bounding box appears. As I explained earlier, you can click and drag on the eight handles to change the size of the line. To stretch the line out, you can click and drag out on either the left or right center handles. Or if I want to make it taller, I could click and drag on the top or bottom center handles. And if you drag one of the four corner handles, you can size the width and height proportionately. You can also rotate your line by placing your cursor outside of the bounding box until it changes into a curved double-headed arrow. Then if you click and drag, you can rotate the line. If you want to move the line, place your cursor inside the bounding box and when your cursor changes into a black arrowhead, you can click and drag to move it to a different spot in your document. And if you don't like the changes you made, you can click on the red no symbol, but when you're happy with it, just click on the green check mark to accept the change and the bounding box goes away. I'm going to undo that change by pressing Command Z on a Mac or it would be Control Z on a PC because I want to show you another trick. If you want to continue with this wavy line pattern and make it longer, you can duplicate the shape layer and move it over to connect to the first layer. To do that, just click and drag the thumbnail of your shape layer over in the Layers panel onto the Create a New Layer icon, which is this icon that looks like a sheet of paper with a folded over corner and then let go of your mouse button and you can see it creates a new shape one copy layer in the layers panel or another way to duplicate a layer is to once the layer is active press command J on a Mac or control J on a PC so now we have a, an exact duplicate of that layer on top of it in the layers panel you can't tell that there's two layers when you look in the live work area because they're both in exactly the same spot but if I use the move tool to click and drag the line over get my move tool and I can use it to move it to either side of the original layer with the wavy line. If I need to use the arrow keys I can nudge the lines together like that and now it looks like a longer wavy line and you can just repeat that process to make the line as long as you want. So I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer now and then I'll move it over using the Move tool. It kind of snaps into place but if you do need to align it better you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard. And let's do one more. So Command J and this time I'll move it over to this end of the line. And now we have a pretty long line of those waves and you can keep going if you want but I'm going to stop here. Looking at the layers panel you can see that my curved line is made up of four separate layers. You can merge those all together into one layer if you want make sure that the top layer is active you can tell which layer is active because it's highlighted in a different color in this case it's blue but in some versions of Photoshop Elements it's a gray color go up to the layer menu and choose merge down or use the keyboard shortcut command E on a Mac or control E on a PC 
That merges the active layer with the layer right below it in the Layers panel. Just keep merging down. I'm pressing Command E on a Mac, or it'd be Control E on a PC. So now all those layers are combined into one single layer, and I can use Free Transform to manipulate that line like we did before when it was the shorter version. I'm going to click back on the graphics icon now and add some other curved lines. It's the same few simple steps. So you double click on the shape that you want and that puts it into the live work area. Step two is to simplify the shape layer by going up to the layer menu and choosing simplify layer. Step three is to delete unwanted part of your shape. So I'll make the rectangular marquee tool active and then click and drag diagonally to put a rectangular selection around the arrowhead that you want to delete. Press the delete or backspace key on your keyboard to get rid of it and then press command or control D to deselect. Step four is optional. You can resize or rotate or move your shape using free transform. I'm just gonna get the move tool, move it up here above our other line so we can see it better. And step five, which is also optional, but we haven't really looked at this trick yet. First duplicate that layer by pressing command or control J and that added a duplicate layer right on top of that shape. Now go up to the image menu and choose rotate and go down and you can choose flip layer horizontal so I'll click on that and now I'll click and drag to move it over you can see I can connect it that way to create an oval or I can even pull it out further and just connect it like that and you can always use your um, arrow keys to to line them up if you need to. So those are just a couple more ideas for making curved lines in Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.